time entry is an interactive timesheet that employees can use to enter in time spent working. Let's click on time entry and we'll take a look together. At the top left, we have the date range selected. This will allow us to enter, edit, or view transactions within that date range. To change the date range, click in the date. It will bring up a calendar and we can change the date by selecting it in the calendar. Here we can change the month, change the year, or we can use the arrows to toggle back and forth between each month. To add in a new record, we hit the New button, and then we'll have the option to select the type of record we want to add. Here we have the type set to Time, and then I can enter the amount of time that I spent working. The record has now been added, and from here I can edit the record if I made a mistake, or I can delete the record. From the Columns button, we can change the columns available. Here I can add in Department Code, Position Code, and Task Code. And if I'm entering piece codes, I can use pieces. And we'll hit apply to apply that. Now if I go to try and add a record, adding these columns is going to modify my available options. Now when adding time, I can allocate my hours to a particular department, a particular position, and a particular job. To add in a different type of record, we just hit type and we can go to absent. Selecting absent, we can then choose our date to enter the record, and we can select our absent code, the absent time, paid time, any applicable department position or job codes. Then we can hit OK. That entered our absent record. We can also enter in a piece type record. If we hit new, select piece, then we can select our piece code, and then enter in the number of pieces, and hit OK. Now we'll go over how to set up the time entry access to be available to your employees. You'll need to sign into the Inquiry Master with the Master account. And then we're going to go to Utilities, Customize, General Access, and we're going to go to Time Entry. Once we turn it on, we'll get some options. Here we have the different record types that we're going to allow our employees to enter. Then we have the option for Time Override or Start Stop Times. The Time Override is the example we were showing earlier in the demonstration of time entry, where you just enter the total hours worked. Start stop times, the employee would enter when they started working and when they stopped working. At the bottom, if you have absent selected, we can select the different absent codes that would be available for the employee to enter in. Once we're done, we hit save and then OK. Next step, to give individual access, we can go to employee access, choose the individual, and then turn on time entry. This will then give access to the one employee. If you need to assign access to multiple employees, there is an option here to batch. When hitting batch, it's going to apply the options to everyone listed. And the employees listed, that is controlled by this filing cabinet button here. So if you're seeing or not seeing somebody that you want or do not want in this list, you would use this filing cabinet button to remove them like so or add them back in. Click up here for a detailed video on how to use the filing cabinet button. Once you have all your employees selected that you want to batch, we can hit batch. Then we're gonna select the option we want, time entry. Then, very important, we wanna set this to add only. That's just going to add the option and not overwrite options that have been previously set up. Then we'll hit run and once it's finished, it will automatically close down and the batch has finished.